In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. God, be gracious to us and bless us and make your face shine upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May your ways be known on the earth, your saving power among the nations. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and reveal your justice in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in, in the highest and, and peace to his people on earth. earth. Lord God, God, heavenly King, King almighty God, God and Father, Father we, we worship you, we give, give you thanks, we praise, praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only, only Son of the Father, Father Lord God, God, Lamb, Lamb of God, God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us your gift of faith, that, forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to that which is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food, a banquet of fine wines, of food rich and juicy, of fine strained wines. On this mountain, he will remove the morning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek he will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth, for the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, see, this is our God in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us, for the hand of the Lord rests on this mountain. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. In, In the, the Lord's, Lord's own house, house shall I dwell, dwell for ever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. In, In the, the Lord's, Lord's own house, house shall I dwell, dwell for ever and, and ever. ever. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. In, in the, the Lord's own, own house shall I dwell, dwell for ever and, and ever. ever. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil, my cup is overflowing. In, in the, the Lord's, Lord's own, own house shall I dwell, dwell for ever and, and ever. ever. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. In, In the, the Lord's, Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Word was made flesh and lived among us. To all who did accept him he gave power to become children of God. Alleluia. alleluia.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a feast for his son's wedding. He sent his servants to call those who had been invited, but they would not come. Next he sent some more servants. Tell those who've been invited, he said, that I have my banquet all prepared. My oxen and fattened cattle have been slaughtered. Everything is ready. Come to the wedding. But they were not interested. One went off to his farm, another to his business, and the rest seized his servants, maltreated them and killed them. The king was furious. He dispatched his troops, destroyed those murderers and burnt their town. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but as those who were invited proved to be unworthy, go to the crossroads in the town and invite everyone you can find to the wedding. So these servants went out onto the roads and collected everyone together they could find, bad and good alike, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In first century Palestine, weddings were a matter for the whole community. They gathered at the synagogue, the place of meeting, the only place big enough in the village and parted. And if you were a member of the community, it would be unthinkable not to turn up at a wedding feast. Anyone who didn't turn up was declaring themselves not to want to be a member of the community. Wedding feasts are special. But the one in Jesus' story is more than special. It's the wedding feast of the son of the king. What could be more special, more important? Preparations are complete. The feast is ready. Servants from the king go to invite everyone. No one comes. He sends out more, reminding the potential guests that the feast is ready. Still no one comes. They make all kinds of excuses for not being there. The king is not best pleased, so he sends his armies to wreak havoc on these people. Then the king sends out more servants to gather anyone who will come, anyone who will respond. The wedding feast is full and a grand time is had by all. Jesus is using this story, a tale to which we can all probably relate at some level, to illustrate the kingdom of God. The Jews, the descendants of the Israelites, saved by the direct action of God in the ancient world, are the chosen people. God then sent the prophets. The chosen people of God haven't really listened. They've rejected the message turning religion into a dry, ritualistic activity. God sent more prophets. The chosen people have become more concerned about their farms, their shops, their businesses, material goods and wealth. They've ignored the law and the prophets. Indeed, some of the prophets have been treated appallingly badly. Some, like John the Baptist, perhaps the greatest of them all, have been killed to silence them. Indeed, Jesus will suffer the same fate. So the first chosen people didn't listen. Now the message will be spoken into the highways and byways. The world will now hear the invitation of God. Salvation is for all. The first chosen people of God haven't listened. The rest of the world is to be invited. No wonder the Pharisees go off to try to get rid of Jesus. He's attacking the very foundation of their power, their place in Jewish society, their authority. So here we are, 20 centuries later, in our cosy world, and we can say to ourselves, silly Pharisees, why couldn't they see what was going on? Why could they not understand what Jesus was saying? It's obvious. That's all very well. But what does the parable say to us? Well, on a human level, not replying to an invitation to a wedding is bad manners, and I'm sure we just wouldn't consider it. Ignoring the reminder is similarly bad manners. Roughing up and murdering someone who pops around to invite you personally is not just bad manners, but downright criminal. 
like the king in the story. If it was our wedding, we'd be less than delighted with our potential guests. But Jesus is not concerned with our social clumsiness. He's concerned with the offer of the gift of eternal life, the gift of salvation and the invitation to believe. We are invited to the wedding feast. Here, today, we are attending it. This is the wedding feast, the Eucharist, the gift of Jesus himself in the bread and wine, the greatest moment of remembrance and thanksgiving we have, given to us by Jesus for all time. And here we are, taking part. No problem there then, I'm preaching to the converted. As I say, no problem there then. But Jesus is saying something deeper. He's not just talking about turning up, not really. He's talking about faith, about our response to it, about the acceptance of God's calling in our lives, of putting the effort into our encounters with God, just like we do for the wedding of a member of the family or a close friend. Is God a priority in our lives? We are here now and that's terrific. But what happens next? Do we commit ourselves properly to his service in our lives? Think of what God is giving, what he's offered. In the sacrifice of the Lord for us on the cross, God's promise is fulfilled. The Lord of hosts has, as Isaiah the ancient prophet declares, destroyed death forever. Every tear will indeed be wiped away. We believe and we shall be saved. This is the center of our faith. Death, the last enemy, is broken. Salvation is there for all. Faith must be more than just going through the motions, more than just turning up, more than just what we do. It must become the center of our lives. It must become who we are. As people of faith, we now declare our faith in the words of the creed. We, we believe, believe in, in one God. God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to God our Father. Almighty God, we pray for your church, for bishops, priests, church wardens and PCCs, that the decisions they make will be for the common good. We pray for our own APCM, which is going to take place this morning. We give thanks for all the members of this congregation who serve on the PCC and for those members of our community who do so much behind the scenes. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our government that they will make wise choices in their efforts to control coronavirus whilst attempting to maintain economic stability. We pray for the people of this country, that they will cooperate and obey the measures brought in for the common good to help control the virus. Let us pray for refugees who continue to flee from crisis throughout the world, for those who have willingly invested their time and energy in serving the most vulnerable, let us give thanks for the aid workers throughout the rest of the world working in places and situations that are no longer newsworthy because of the pandemic. 
Give them the encouragement to continue their invaluable contribution of love and care for those people rebuilding their lives after man-made or natural disasters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for all those finding their life painful, lonely or uncertain, especially those who are ill or vulnerable and those living in constant pain. May they know your peace and your presence. Help them to sense your comfort in times of need and bless their families and carers for the support that they give. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Merciful Father, when death separates us from those we love and we find it hard to live without them, help us to remember that death has no power at all over the peace you give and the love we shared with those we've lost goes beyond the grave. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Let us give thanks for our spiritual home, St Anselm's, for Father David, Alison, James and all those who make worshipping here possible for the sense of belonging and community it gives us. Pray that our young people are able to continue their studies despite the ongoing challenges facing schools and colleges, and may their hard work be rewarded. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage we may ever be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for, for the, the sake, sake of your Son, Son our, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Our Saviour Christ came to speak peace to those who were far off and to those who were near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. It'll become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It'll become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever.
pray, my friends, that this my sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the, the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. Lord God, may the gifts we offer bring us your love and forgiveness and give us freedom to serve you with our lives. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. From sunrise to sunset this day is holy, for Christ has risen from the tomb and scattered the darkness of death with light that will not fade. This day the risen Lord walks with your gathered people, unfolds for us your word, and makes himself known in the breaking of the bread. And though the night will overtake this day, you summon us to live in endless light, the never-ceasing Sabbath of the Lord. And so, with choirs of angels and with all the heavenly host, we proclaim your glory and join their unending song of praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come, come again. again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, the apostles, the martyrs, Anselm and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us now pray with confidence in the words our Saviour gave us. Our, our Father, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. 
Grant us peace. peace. Behold, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and, and I shall be healed. Let us pray. We praise and thank you, O Christ, for this sacred feast. For here we receive you. Here the memory of your passion is renewed. Here our minds are filled with grace. And here a pledge of future glory is given when we shall feast at that table where you reign with all your saints for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Almighty, Almighty God, God, we, we thank, thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.